Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem longest palindrome. We're given a string S consisting of lowercase or uppercase characters. We want to return the longest palindrome that we can create using these characters. So we're not checking if this string is a palindrome. We can rearrange these characters however we want. We just want to create the longest palindrome possible. Now, what do you know about palindromes? Well, before we even get into that, what do you know about strings? They can be either of odd length or they can be of even length. If I have a string of odd length, maybe it looks like this, just the character A. Maybe it has three characters, A, B, C. This is not a palindrome, right? If we want to make this a palindrome, we can change it to this because a palindrome, when you reverse it, is going to be the same. So you reverse this, you get A, B, A. Now, any string of length one is technically a palindrome because it's going to be itself. But with odd length strings, we could have one that looks like this, three A's in a row. Or we could have one that looks like this. Basically, the outer layer has to be the same. And then we shift the pointers inward until we either reach one character. Or if we don't reach a single character, we are then dealing with an even length string. But we could have had a string that's not a palindrome like this. Um, maybe I add an A on the outside here. So here we have the same character. We shift our pointer inward. Here we do not have the same character, right? The idea is with an odd length string, it will be a palindrome if we have a pair of characters that is the same and then another pair of characters that's the same. In this case, we don't. And we can have a single character that doesn't have a matching pair. That's when we're dealing with odd length. With even length, it's a bit more strict. We have to have matching pairs. So we can have a two A's. We can have four A's. We can have a two A's and two B's. As long as we have an even number of every single character, we can create a palindrome with it. So if I just told you I have six copies of A, I have four copies of C, and I have two copies of Z. I know with 100% certainty we can create a palindrome of length 12 from these characters because we have two Zs. Let's just say we put them in the middle. We have four Cs. I'm going to put two on this side and two on this side, and we have six As. I'm going to put three on one side and then three on the other side. So this is just an observation you need to make about palindromes to solve this problem efficiently. Once you know this, though, it's relatively easy. So we're going to use this to our advantage. And by the way, what I was trying to get at with the odd example is here, we can actually have one of these values be odd because suppose that the number of Z's is actually three. That's also fine because we're going to put the three Z's in the middle and then we're going to put, you know, the other ones half and half. But consider this, maybe we have three Z's, but we also have, let's say, a single Y. Well, this time we have to make a choice. We can't have an odd number of Y's and an odd number of Z's. From this, we can only pick a single one. So either we could pick two Z's and one Y, or we could pick zero Y's and three Z's. The length of the longest palindrome doesn't change in either of those cases. So that's just another observation you need to make. So that's obviously for the odd case. I know I kind of wrote it down here under the even, but I was talking about the odd case. So once you know all of that, the problem becomes relatively simple to solve because we realize we just want to count the occurrences of each character. Generally, the easiest way to do that is with a hash map. I will show you, though, we can actually get away with just using a hash set, but I think that's best saved for the code explanation. Now, the size of the hash map is technically constant because we could have 52 two different distinct characters, uppercase and lowercase characters. That's total of 52, 26 plus 26. So technically this is constant, but depending on the character set, it could be a linear time space complexity solution. In terms of time complexity, you're about to see it's going to be linear time. The space is constant, but this is going to be linear. So consider this as the input. Let's say we're going to count the number of A's. We read these two. OK, the number of A's is going to be two. We go through all these. We're going to see the number of B's is going to be three. We go through these and we see that the number of C's 
is going to be 3 as well. Now, we could technically solve this problem after populating the entire hash map, but I think it's actually easier to understand and easier to code up to do it as we populate the hash map. So this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to have a variable, let's say it's called the result. It's the length of the longest palindrome we could create. After I see a single A, I'm not going to do anything, but when I see two A's, I'm going to say, okay, the result is definitely at least two because we can create a palindrome with these two characters. And then I'm going to go through this. I'm going to see a single B and I'm not going to do anything just yet. But when I see two B's, I'm going to say, okay, this is two more B's. So therefore the longest we can create is now four. I'm going to see the third B. I'm not going to do anything other than just populate the hash map with it. So this is going to count three B's so far. Then I'm going to start going through the C's. Even though right now, technically the longest we could create is five, I'm not setting this to five just because it's going to be a little bit easier to code up that way. And you'll see exactly what I mean when we get into the code. But now I'm going to count the C's. We see two of them here. So I'm going to set the count to two and we saw two more. So now we know at the very least we can create six characters that are going to form a palindrome. So we have three pairs and we can create a palindrome of length six. And then I'm going to see the third C. So I'm going to count this as that. Now, if we just counted the pairs, like the matching pairs, the longest palindrome we can create is of length six. So now the only question is, do any of these have an odd number? Because if any of these has an odd number, we can put a plus one to the result and we can set the result to seven. But if none of these have an odd number, if all of these were even, then we already contributed the maximum we could from each of these to the result. So if these were all two, then we'd say, okay, the result is six, but they're not. We have at least one that is odd. In this case, we have two that are odd. So what we're going to say is we can add a plus one to the result. The result is going to be seven. It doesn't matter whether we choose this one or this one, we would be able to create a palindrome either way. So let's say you know, we get rid of the C, this would obviously be the palindrome. This is the way I'm going to code it up right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is create our hash map. I'm going to call it count and I'm going to create it as a default dict. So I'm going to set the default value to integer. That means if we were trying to do something like this count of, let's say, a incrementing it by one. Well, then we get a key error if we didn't have this. We'd get a key error because we haven't inserted this just yet. How can we increment something that doesn't exist? Well, with a default dict, the default value of that will be set to zero. So that's why I'm doing it this way. And so I'm going to also declare our result, set it to zero. And that's, of course, what we're going to return. So first phase of the algorithm is this. For every character in the string, I'm going to increment the count of it by one. I don't even need to check if it's already a key because of the default dict. Next, I'm going to say, is the count of this character even. If we take this count and mod it by two and the remainder is zero, it must be an even number. Therefore, we're going to increment the result by two. In the previous example in the drawing explanation, if we got a count of two for A, we would increment the result by two. When we got to three, we would not do anything to the result. But when we get to four, it's also divisible by two. That means we added two more to this. We introduced a new pair a matching pair that we could use in our palindrome. So when this is four, I'm also going to increment the result, not by one, sorry, this should be a two. So every time we get a matching pair, increment the result by two. And that's pretty much it for the first phase. Now it's possible that some of the counts could be odd. If at least one of the counts is odd, which we can check pretty easily like this, let's go through every count in the hash maps value set. So going through all the values, if any of these is odd. So if I take this and mod it by two and there is a remainder, I could set this equal to one or I could just leave it as is. If it's a remainder, then we're going to increment the result by one and break out of the loop. We could also return the result here if we wanted to, but we have one down here, so it's kind of redundant. This is the entire code. Here we're counting the pairs and here we're checking if there's at least one that has an odd count, in which case we increment the result by one. So I'm going to run this. And as you can see, it works and it's pretty efficient, but there's actually a more concise way to solve this problem. This is not a more efficient way, but I think it's worth knowing because if you notice here, since we're checking every other time that we increment the count of a single character, 
we can actually accomplish this with a hash set. We don't actually care about the count, right? Like when I say, okay, the count of A is one, don't do anything. The count of A is two, okay, increment the result by two. That count of A is three, don't do anything. Count is four, increment the result by two. So it's gonna go like that every other time. So we actually don't care about the specific count because we're always incrementing the result by two anyway. We just care if it's odd or even. We can get away with using a hash set. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to call it scene. Let's say we've already seen this number before. Maybe there's a better name for this. Then here I'm going to do something instead of incrementing. I'm going to check if this is in scene, then let's uh, remove it from the hash set. And if it's not already in the hash set, let's add it to the hash set just like this. So add the character and remove the character. Now, which one of these two cases do you think we should increment the result by two? When we remove it or when we add it? Well, when we add it, that's gonna be the first time we saw that character. But when we remove it, that's gonna be the second time we saw that character. So this is the case that we want to increment by two. So we've added the character once and then we remove it, increment by two. Next time we're gonna add the character again and then we're gonna remove it. So then increment by two. So it's going every other time that we see the same character. So this works to count the pairs, but how do we know? After this is done, do we have any numbers that were counted an odd number of times? How would we know that with a hash set? Well, as you can see, if there were any numbers that were counted an odd number of times, they would still be remaining in the hash set. They would have never been removed. So if we counted A a single time, we would have added it, but never removed it. If we counted A three times, we would have added it, removed it, and then added it again, so it would still be left in the hash set. So down here, we can say if scene is not empty, then increment the result by one and then return it. A more concise way to do this, if you wanna be a really try harder whatever you can say result plus one if seen else return the regular result so i'm going to go ahead and run this as you can see it works it looks like it's less efficient i'm just going to try it again and now it's more efficient okay if you're wondering how i was able to do it so quickly well i actually solved this problem six years ago in c mind you and let's actually take a look at the code from that just for curiosity's sake um you can see i was actually quite the try hard it looks like i actually had pretty much the same solution even with c that's cool if you found this helpful check out nico.io for a lot more thanks for watching and i'll see you soon